have audio and everything set up ready for you to use. You take this away on this workshop devoted to the faculty's role in student retention. Take it away. Great. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm excited that you guys are here. You guys being generic term for the record in case I have any ladies that are concerned that I'm singling them out. I'm not. Um, want to just share with you something that was uh, something that I feel is very important for faculty especially to realize and that is that they do play they we play a role in student retention uh, for the entire campus whether you're on a an adult studies campus whether you're online whether you teach on the main campus in traditional uh, whatever your role may be as a faculty member we all have uh, a role in student retention. Uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Dr. Parrott's take on um, student retention and his attitude toward uh, that. Uh, so we're going to cover that in just a minute, but first I want to talk a little bit about some questions we're going to discuss as we go through the webinar today. Uh, one is, should faculty address student retention? Um, why or why not? And do they? Hang on just a second. Let's see if I can... Second is what role should faculty play in student retention and is there an end to the responsibility of uh, where student retention is concerned? And then third, should the faculty's role in retention be confined to the classroom or is it more far reaching than just simply being in the classroom? So those are some of the things that we're really going to kind of talk about and focus on as we move through the webinar today. Uh, so going back to Dr. Parrott's perspective on uh, retention. Uh, you might recall in Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, we have the prodigal, of, I mean, uh, the parable of the lost sheep. And the main focus there that uh, Christ shares through that is to accept the fact that we need to sometimes leave, not sometimes, but all the time, leave the, uh, the main flock and go after the one that has wandered off and is lost. And so that's our attitude that we should have toward uh, retention. If you've got a class of students and you have one student in particular that is just missing a lot or is just not posting a lot, that's a concern. And we should be concerned enough to personally reach out to that student to find out, you know, tell me what's going on. Uh, are you having a problem? Is there something I can help you with? Um, Sometimes we have problems reaching students, and that's where working with student services, uh, the student services team will come in handy as well, because they have the ability sometimes to reach students when we don't. So if you are attempting to reach that lost sheep in your class, and you're not really able to uh, get a hold of them, then take the opportunity then to reach out to your student services people or to the dean and uh, let them know that you're having trouble reaching a student, but you're concerned about them. That is just an important part in, in your role as a retention uh, person than anything else. The second thing, that we need to look at is that frequently, frequent faculty student contact in or out of the classroom is the most important factor in student motivation involved in involvement. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I don't know how many of you actually spend time talking to your students uh, in a way that really makes them feel like you value them. And that's something that you, that we all need to understand is important to the student. That frequent contact, uh, we have that in class most of the time. Even with students that might be a little introverted, there are ways to get them involved in the class, and I'm sure a lot of you do that. But what about outside of class? Uh, do you walk up to those students that seem to be, you know, to themselves and, and not saying a whole lot or participating a whole lot during a break and share with them uh, a little bit about yourself or ask them how their day is going or anything like that? Sometimes that's the only thing that it might take to keep a student motivated uh, and involved in what's going on. Now, for those of you that might teach online, 
Uh, the same can be true just in a simple message to the student. I know you don't necessarily uh, get to talk to those students one-on-one. -on -one. I teach online classes myself, and sometimes it's hard to, to really make sure they're staying motivated and involved because we don't have that face-to-face -face contact. But there are a lot of ways that you can do that now, and, and Zoom is a, is a great way to uh, stay in contact with students that you might have some concerns about. Um, email them or message them and ask them if they would have a few minutes where you could talk with them by Zoom. Uh, and then set up an opportunity for them to to take part in a Zoom meeting with you. Um, a lot of different ways in online that you can also make sure your students are staying motivated and involved. So what are some of the ways that faculty uh, have a role in retention? Well, we take a look at a number of different things within our organization as, itself. One is by conducting a consumer satisfaction survey or the CSS. Some of you might be familiar with that. Some of you might not. Uh, but it is a, a tool that we use to get feedback from students on how they're feeling and thinking about a number of different areas on the campus. But faculty is one of those. And, uh, you know, most of the time, I think we get really good scores on that. But there may be times where students struggle a little bit with faculty because they just don't feel like they're listening or that they really take the time to care to know what's going on in their lives. So make sure you know uh, about that and know what you can do then to increase uh, their satisfaction overall. Uh, we do have what's called an overall promoter score and that basically tells us how many students are gonna be willing to go out in the community and tell other people about Bellhaven and how they're feeling about Bellhaven and whether or not they would encourage other people to consider Bellhaven as an option if they want to go back to school. Uh, so we want, to, we want that promoter score to be high, and one of the ways we do that is through faculty helping us by making it a positive experience for students. Uh, the other way we do is in, of course, student evaluations, which you know everybody is, is, I'm sure, familiar with. And hopefully, as faculty, you are getting uh, copies or something that lets you know how you did in a class and what your students said. Because I know for my sake, when I teach a class, I want to know how the students felt about the class uh, and if they had any feedback that I can then take and, and help me as I prepare to move on to the next class uh, and possibly teaching the same class again the next time uh, to make sure that I adjust to help the students enjoy and get more out of the class session. So end of course evaluations are important. Uh, we hope everybody is is utilizing those and the, the information you get from them. Um, there are different things as far as emotional support uh, that is involved with faculty's role in retention as well. It includes three uh, specific elements that I think need to be uh, addressed. Number one, students feeling that they had a professor that made them excited about learning. Uh, if we're not motivated to really get the message out in class that we're excited about the information we're presenting to them, how much do you think the students are going to be excited about what we're telling them? So you got to make sure as you, as you are preparing for class that you're doing things that are going to help you show your excitement about what you're learning so therefore the students can be excited uh, about their learning. The second thing is that the uh, professors cared about them as a person. Uh, hopefully, and I, I, I would venture to say that I think probably all the instructors that teach for Bellhaven have an attitude of wanting to have students know that they care about them as a person. We've all heard the old adage that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I firmly believe that that's true. Uh, and I firmly believe that, that we, that's how we should focus on our students and helping them understand that we do care about what's going on in their lives. We understand that, that struggles are there and they're present and that there's things that maybe we could do to help uh, ease their load a little bit, help them make sure they're getting the material well so that they're not quite so stressed about it. A lot of different things you can do to help students make it really feel like you care about them. And then the third is uh, that they have mentors who encourage them to pursue their goals and dreams. You do serve, faculty do serve as a mentor. Whether we really want that role or not, that is a role we have. And a lot of students 
uh, if you have them consistently in different classes, uh, start to look up to you and want to know what your opinion is. Uh, I hear from my own faculty, especially those that teach consistently different classes, that uh, students really talk to them about going on to graduate school or going on to get their graduate degree. And I think one of the reasons that they really share that with those instructors is because they really want to know what their opinion is on that plan and whether or not they think they can, they can be successful in that. And uh, so I think it's important that you recognize the fact that you have a uh, role as a mentor that can help them pursue uh, what they plan to do after they complete their degree, whether it's going to get their master's degree um, or even farther than that. So actually uh, in my research, there are 63 steps that faculty can take to improve retention. I can be a little overwhelming, uh, but I'm, I've kind of focused it down to 10 steps because most of us are dealing with adult learners and online learners. And so a lot of what was there for the 63 steps deals with what can be done in a traditional classroom format. But some of those uh, actually can be tr moved over to be used for uh, adult and online as well. So we're gonna look at 10 steps that we can take to help improve retention as faculty members. The first one is to learn the name of each student quickly. I'm very grateful that some of the tools we have available to us now uh, through Canvas, uh, especially online, uh, help in the sense that I'm the kind of person that once I see a face and can put a face with a name, I'm quicker to learn their name than if I just have, you know, uh, a list of names. Uh, so I'm very grateful that we now have the option to be able to see some pictures of our students. For those of you that teach on ground, um, in the classroom on ground, we don't necessarily have all of the pictures of our students, but, but we have, you know, some pictures. So it helps that way. But either way, there can be ways that you can uh, learn and, and use to learn the name of each student. Because I think it's important to call students by names. Um, again, when you see students, uh, if you're on ground, you see students in the, in the hallway that you've had in previous classes, nothing means more to them for the do you call them by name. Because again, it helps them know, number one, you know who they are, they're not just a number. And uh, it shows them that you care enough about them to remember their name. So work to learn the name of each student quickly. The second thing is to spend a moment after class to chat with a student that may have missed the previous class or that you see appears to be struggling. Now, again, for online instructors, that can be a little bit difficult because obviously you don't have that in class time with that student, but there are different ways that you can also operate to help them know that you're concerned about them uh, send them a message, uh, setting up a Zoom meeting, uh, contacting student services or the dean or someone in online to let them know that there's a concern there. Um, if it's a student that isn't an online class and they appear to be struggling, it's especially important to reach out to them because we want to make sure the students online are really developing the tools they need to be successful and without you stepping in to figure out what might be going on to cause them to struggle. It's hard to know that. So spend a moment, whether it's after class, if you're on ground or by sending a message or setting up a Zoom meeting, if you're online to work with a student that appears to be struggling. The third thing is to call or email students who miss class. Now again, a lot of us as faculty don't have access necessarily to students' phone numbers, unless you, if you're on ground, you pass around a, a thing at the beginning of class to get a list of their students and their phone numbers and emails, uh, preferably their belly of an email. Uh, but some way to make sure you're staying in contact with them is important. So if, whether or not you have their phone number, you hopefully always have access to their email through Canvas or through uh, BlazeNet, the class roster always has their uh, email addresses on it. So there are different ways you can make sure that you're staying in contact with those students, but if they miss class, figure out a way to contact them to find out what's going on and everything's okay. It's important for you as well, because if they're missing work, but they're planning on dropping the class, then you know 
at that point, that's not somebody you need to necessarily keep trying to contact about missing work because they're planning to drop the class. And uh, sometimes it's easier to find that out directly than having to wait to be told that. Fourth thing, provide positive reinforcement whenever possible. Um, that's sometimes difficult to do, especially when you're grading. But one of the things I, I really like seeing, um, and I know they do this in online, and that's they encourage you to, when you're grading papers or you're grading anything, to try to start off on a positive note about what the student did right and then focus some on what they need to work on. Uh, so those of you that teach on ground, I would encourage you to do the same thing. Um, maybe when you're grading, just give them a quick uh, note at the top of the paper, um, letting them know that, you know, what they did well, uh, and then go into what they might want to work on. If it's something that you're giving them back personally, spend a few minutes and just tell them, you know, you did a really good job on, on this. Uh, take a look at my comments and, and work on what you might want to the way you see that you need to work on a little more, but try to provide that positive reinforcement. That always helps people to stay motivated. Uh, number five, circulate around the class as you talk or ask questions. Uh, again, for online, you're not going to be circle, circulating around your class, uh, but for on-ground people, you do have an opportunity when you're actually standing before the class, not just to stand before the class, but to walk around. Some rooms might be set up in a way that might make it difficult for you to do a lot of walking around. Uh, but I think you might recall times that you were sitting in class or when you're sitting in a conference uh, or some kind of training, if whoever's presenting is kind of walking around, it tends to keep you engaged more because you're wondering what they're up to. <laughs> so keep your students wondering what you're up to and uh, circulate around the class so that they're not disengaging from what's going on. Number six is to vary your instructional techniques. Uh, that can be anything from uh, stopping using a PowerPoint at a particular moment and focus on the board, or have them stop what they're doing in a lecture and really focus on, on a group assignment or, or group project you can do in class. So there's different ways you can engage the student and still help them learn and get the material without having to just stand in front of a classroom and lecture the entire time. Uh, online, you don't really have that option, but uh, you can still engage your students in, in different ways. Number seven, utilize small group discussions in class whenever feasible. That is the best way for students sometimes to really get the information. We can stand before them and share it all we want. Uh, but if they're not actually, some of them, if they're not engaged and working on what we're talking about, they're not necessarily going to get it. And I know that sometimes in a five-week class, we feel like we're really pushing a lot of information toward them. So one of the best ways to deal with that is by having them actually take over the learning process in small groups and, and do exercises with them that really drive home the material you're trying to present. That way they're, they're developing in their self and they're not having to listen to us talk quite as much. Number eight, take the initiative to contact and meet with students who are doing poor work. Again, if, if we are not the ones that are gonna reach out and find out what a student is not getting the work done or why they're really struggling with particular work, um, nobody else is gonna do that. Uh, you may share with student services, but they're not really gonna know what they need to do sometimes to address the fact that a student is not doing well on a particular project or not getting their work done. Uh, sometimes the dean can assist you with that if you're having a, uh, you know struggling with trying to figure out what's going on with a student. The dean might be able to step in and help you kind of brainstorm a little bit or even sit down with you and the student to figure out what's going on and if there's something that might could be done differently to help that student make sure they're doing better work. Uh, number nine is consider ways to reinforce positively student accomplishments. Again, if you've got a student that has not been doing real well with writing, but all of a sudden you kind of see a shift in their writing and you see that they're doing better, or maybe that they're doing presentations in class and uh, for some reason they didn't do great the first time, but the second time they did a lot better, take those opportunities to really uh, show the student that you recognize that they're doing 
they're doing better, that they're working on what you've asked them to work on. And I think that will help to encourage them a little bit and to motivate them to, to continue on. And then number 10, uh, you know, consider inviting guest lecturers to class when appropriate. Now, sometimes that's, that's possible. Sometimes it's not online. Again, you're not necessarily going to have an opportunity to invest get, to invite guest lecturers. But on ground, you can do that. The one thing I would say about that is to make sure that if you're inviting a guest lecturer, you clear that with uh, your respective dean on your campus before you invite someone into the classroom, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. But by inviting a guest lecturer to class, um, it gives you the opportunity to sit back and kind of watch your students and to see how they participate with someone other than you, um, how they may react uh, when you're not lecturing them to, to what they're being, to what's being shared with them. Uh, it also gives them an opportunity to recognize that the, the importance that you place on the subject matter by actually bringing in a person who might be really an expert in that field. Most of the time, faculty that are in the classroom and teaching uh, in the classroom are those experts, and we recognize that. But, you know, if it's marketing, that may not be something most of us do every day of our lives. So it might be good to really bring in somebody that we know that works for a marketing firm that can really drive home some of the information that we are sharing with our students and help them realize that that's something that they can take back and immediately apply to whatever job they may be working in. So one of the, the other things that I really enjoy, um, especially in the online program, but it's, it's there for everybody, is the alert, early alert system that we have. That's because we recognize the fact that faculty truly are the first line of defense. Uh, if we don't take the time to really engage students and figure out what's going on with them, then uh, we're going to not necessarily know, especially as an administrator, whether it's the dean or student services, if we're about to lose a student because of something that may be happening, whether they just don't get the work and so they just don't understand why they need to keep trying if they aren't getting it. Or if you know as a faculty member that something is, if they've shared with you that something is going on in their personal life that you feel others need to be concerned about or, or check on them about or help them through, then it's important for you to, to share that. Our early alert system, which in our case is uh, usually in can, it's in Canvas uh, on the right hand side is a student alert button that you can actually share information with. Uh, the respective student services people and online people and deans that need to know it so we can help those students uh, and really dig in to find out what we can do to potentially save that student. So I want you to recognize as faculty, we are the first line of defense. And without you taking ownership of the fact that you've got to share information you find out about students, not to violate confidence or anything like that, but just to try to help us be in a position where we make and help them make it through a bump in the road uh, or sometimes a hill, you know, it's not necessarily a bump. Some students feel like they're trying to climb a hill or a mountain and they don't know how to do that on their own. So more people than just uh, faculty can be there to help them. But you, you need to recognize that you are the first line of defense. Second thing I would ask you to think about is do you recognize when a student has disengaged? That's one of the things I think a lot of faculty may struggle with. Um, it's easy to see those students in class who just are looking at their paper the whole time. They're not really looking up. They're not really focusing on what's going on in class. Uh, they may be spending more time on their computer and then they're spending participating in class. Those are the students that we really need to figure out why are they not participating. But there are other ways students can be disengaged as well, showing up for late for class, not showing up for class, those are signs that might show the students kind of decided, mm, I don't know, maybe I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, so it goes back to the early alert to let people know the students miss, you know, another class. I'm kind of concerned that something may be going on with it. 
tried reaching out, not getting much response to them. Is that something that you feel like you could help me with um, in finding out what's going on with that student? But faculty really need to start being able to figure out if a student has really disengaged. Uh, online, that's sometimes a little more easy for you to know because if they're not posting discussion question responses, uh, if they're not turning in papers, uh, they're considered absent. So that's that's a little something that should be disconcerting and you know something that we should be checking on. Um, I think it's also important to encourage students to take advantage of tutoring services. Now online, we do have tutoring services available online for our students. That is, a, that is great tools. If they're struggling, it's a great way to point them in a direction to be able to get the help they need to do better, uh, whether it's writing or math. Um, for on ground, we don't necessarily have as many tutoring services, so it's almost important for faculty to let the deans know if there are specific students that you think would benefit from some writing tutorials. Uh, that way we can set up opportunities for those students to you know, sit down with an English instructor and maybe get some tutoring on that. Or maybe we know a student that works and writes extremely well that can help them learn that as well. Uh, math, hopefully on-ground math instructors are taking the time to work with students one-on-one -on -one when the need be, or referring them to some other tutoring services that, that you might know about. Khan Academy is a good one that sometimes can help students deal with uh, math issues. Either way, it's important to make sure they're getting the help they need, whether that's you doing it or contacting the dean to say the student really needs to take advantage of some kind of services and help if we have it to offer. <clears throat> so there are different ways that faculty can also support persistence. And one of those, uh, the first one is, is just making sure that you understand faculty members shape students' psychological processes and attitudes. Uh, so, you have the greatest opportunity sometimes to help students remain in school uh, because of the encouragement you give. Uh, not necessarily just encouragement though, just by being real with them and helping them understand this is why you may be struggling uh, would help a student sometimes overcome what they're having that's blocking them from, from moving on and doing it better. So remember that what you do and the interactions you have with the student is what sometimes helps them understand they can do it uh, or maybe they need to get some help. But your, your role in that is to help try to improve their attitude toward that. Uh, another one is faculty members in class and out of class contacts with their students can affect their sense of fitting in, uh, their loyalty, the, the institutional quality that they feel they're getting. Uh, is it really high quality that they're getting or is it something they're questioning, why am I bothering? Um, if, if that's the case, then we, we're running into some issues that really need to be addressed on a probably a deeper level than just you working individually with the student. We need to figure out what it is that they uh, are really having an issue with and seeing if we can work beyond that as an institution. So we wanna make sure they're feeling like they're getting high quality from those. Uh, satisfaction, I think you can definitely imagine that how you uh, interact with them in class and then sometimes out of class can, can either make them feel very satisfied or make them feel very dissatisfied. If uh, it's an on cl online class and they're not getting a lot of contact from their instructor, um, they may kind of feel like they're doing everything on their own. Sure, they've got the lectures, but it's important to make sure that they know that there is a living, breathing soul who is actually watching over them and helping them try to do the best they can in classes. Uh, Again, that face-to-face -face contact is sometimes missing, but Zoom offers opportunities that we've not ever had really in the past in helping students see you and, and see the concern that you may have for them that just simply writing a message to them won't necessarily convey. If you're on ground and you're teaching in a classroom, 
hopefully students can see that you're concerned about them and you can tell if they are at a level of satisfaction that's good or negative. And if it's not something you can address, because sometimes it's out of our control, if it has to do with an administrative issue, whether it's you know billing or financial aid or not being registered or being pulled out of a class or whatever, that's beyond our control sometimes. But if we if we know a student and we know what's going on with them and they're sharing things with us and feel like they can share things with us, then that's something that we then can take to people who can maybe do something about that so that they can uh, increase their level of satisfaction with, with the education they're getting, they're getting and their experience they're getting. Uh, also, there is a sense of self-development that we can help students see. And again, that's through the feedback that we provide them. If we recognize the fact that I see that you're making corrections, your writing looks better, it looks like you're getting uh, the information that's being put out to you and, and shared with you, I think that those are the kind of things that help students recognize that they are developing and that they are growing in their education and in their skills. And that's what we wanna see happen. Uh, student, faculty members also affect their students' self-confidence and uh, self-efficacy. It's easy for students sometimes to feel really confident about going into a class, but then they bomb the first test, or they bomb the first quiz, or they bomb the first couple of quizzes and their self-confidence really starts to wane. Again, if we recognize that, that there may be an issue there and that that student's not doing as well as we, if we've had them before that we've seen them do before, or if we haven't had them before, if it's somebody that's just continuing to not do well on assignments or tests, take the opportunity to really sit down with that student and try to figure out what's going on. Just that moment of caring sometimes will stop them from becoming discouraged or lose confidence in their abilities. Um, it's also important to know that we are providing that connection between what we're sharing with them in class, what they're learning from us, and then being able to therefore translate that into what they can do uh, in their job. That's not as much of an issue as you can guess with traditional students, but with adult students, it's critical that they be able to take the information they're learning and feel like that's something they can use immediately in their job to either make something better or to make changes uh, or just to be able to use to improve their own skills at work. But recognize the fact that everything we share in class, we need to try to figure out a way to then correlate that to what they're doing in their, in their everyday job. Now that's gonna be different with every student, obviously, but as long as we're giving them an opportunity to see what they're learning and how it applies to today's industry, uh, then that would be what we need to be doing to make sure they're getting the information they need. And then the last thing is, of course, stress. Um, how we react to students, how we are interacting with students can affect their level of stress. If they're really stressed out by something that we're sharing or they're stressed out about how they did on a test, sometimes just a, a quick note of encouragement or pulling them aside and just saying, again, tell me what's going on. I know you didn't do as great on this test as you probably hoped you did, but don't let that get you down. Uh, take a look at what you missed, kind of go back and figure out what it is that you missed in your studying and then figure out the next time you're preparing for a test, what to really look for and to catch. Um, if it's something that they're, they're stressed about work, you know, it might be something that you can, in your experience, share with them how you dealt with an issue at work, if it's dealing with the topic you're, you're sharing with them, or maybe sometimes not, just depending on what they're sharing with you. But our faculty have a wealth of experience and knowledge that they have at their disposal that a lot of students would love to, to know how you dealt with different things over the years. So don't hesitate to share, whether it's through class and something you're discussing in class, your own personal experience. 
Uh, that's one of the reasons I enjoy working with faculty on ground is because I know what their experience level is. I know what their knowledge level is. And so I have no hesitation, generally speaking, uh, of them reaching out to students and really trying to help them lower their level of stress by sharing different ways that can deal with things and how you've dealt with things over the years. So all in all, recognize the fact that in any business, there are different touch points and multiple points of sale. Um, in our case, it's multiple points of sale after they've been recruited to come to Bellhaven, uh, whether that's student services, whether it's having to meet with the dean or inter being, you know, having an interaction with the dean, uh, whether it's in class with the faculty member, there are a lot of different multiple points of contact. But every contact it is, is a decision point for students, whether they stay or whether they leave. And we have a responsibility as faculty to make sure we are doing everything we can possibly do uh, to help a student stay. That's not always within our ability to do, but I think that we need to be looking for ways that we can help them figure out where they're going and what they're doing and if there's anything we can do to help them stay. Maybe even put them in touch with the right person to help them do that. Um, there are a couple of other things that I haven't really put on a slide, but if, if students feel that a faculty is not assessing their work or really getting good feedback to them in a timely manner, that may be something that causes them to be dissatisfied or even may, may be something that the next time a class comes up and they see that instructor's name, uh, they realize, you know what, I don't want to take that because I didn't really get a lot of feedback and help or, or knowledge from that instructor the last time I had them. So make sure in your classes that you're doing all you can to really give the good feedback. Timely is important feedback to students so they can use it to make adjustments and corrections that they need to begin that growth process uh, in that information or skills that you're sharing with them. Um, and then secondly, uh, do what you can to help students know that there are different support programs uh, out there that are available to them. Or if you don't know of a specific program that might be available, talk to your dean, uh, talk to student services, see if there's something we can do, maybe if we don't have something available to help students in specific areas, uh, whether you help develop that program or you maybe give some insight on things that you've seen done before. Anything like that uh, is great if you are doing what you can to help foster student success. The other thing is, again, with the alert, early alert system, help us identify students who need assistance, whether academically uh, or even sometimes socially. If you're just having a student that is just really um, indignant in class or doesn't play well with others sometimes if you're doing small group exercise, exercises, uh, help us to identify those students uh, if you're not feeling like you're really helping that student understand, then help us know that we need to coordinate some kind of intervention, intervention team to, to help that student really understand uh, how to increase their competency with, with social issues or um, academic issues. So that's a lot of different things that we've got that I've presented this morning. Um, I hope that some of that was informative for you. I uh, thank you, you know, that you've taken your time to come and, and hear this information. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or comments that you may have uh, at, that, at this time. And I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and kind of turn that back over to, to Dr. Upchurch and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Ron. Great presentation. I was really uh, excited as uh, you made so many good points, practical points about ways individuals can 
engage with students and keep them engaged and reinforce the importance of that. Uh, truly, we've all seen this and we, we all know this, that it's, it's far more economical to keep a student than it is to recruit a student. And so there is, there is that economical side to it that we're looking at uh, keeping the students versus recruiting. And in this tight economy, that's certainly a factor. But I always come back and think about the student, and, and I've had these in class, and I know you have as well, Ron, and, and those of you who are listening. The student who, in, as, I, as I'm teaching them, I, I, be, I struggle to think, are they, are they in the right place at the right time? And they struggle in, in the class that I'm teaching. And, and I do everything I can to facilitate that. But I, I wonder, you know, is this really a good fit? And then uh, down the road, I hear that they've not only finished but done well and have begun working in an area that's truly making a difference using the information that they've received from us. So I don't think it's a decision that we can make early on about a student. It's not a judgment call. We have the opportunity of investing in these lives and helping them to become who they were meant to be. I say this to students all the time. No doubt you have all heard me say this. No student starts our program with the intent to get partway in, quit, and then have all this debt racked up without that piece of paper at the end. Absolutely. But there are so many pressures, aren't there, for them to have that. Uh, they have family pressures and they have work pressures and and they are all laboring under a certain degree of that imposter syndrome which makes them think that they shouldn't even be in college at all that they're not smart enough and all of those things play into an adult person's mind and and I really appreciated how you hit this so many times Ron that 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 the role of the faculty and truly and you have all heard me say this as well. You faculty are Bellhaven University, the students. You are the essence of what we are. And when you see, when they see that you are committed to them, that you are engaged with them, that you are uh, care about them as individuals and want them to succeed in doing everything they can, then that goes an awful long way to helping them overcome those stress points in their lives. I have a comment here. Uh, from Derek, a great way to find out what's taking place in a student's life academically, professionally, and personally is as simply, is as, simply as how's the home front. Good, good comment, Derek. This usually allows an indirect approach to give the student or anyone to talk about what's most important at that time. And you also get to discover some neat things about them as a person that makes them memorable. Excellent, excellent, Derek. I really like that. I uh, appreciate your comment there. Well, some of you are posting in the chat if you have questions or if you want to activate your microphone, Ron. Uh, I, I know you're open for questions. Anyone like that out there? You want to have a question or pose a question? Ron, here's, a, here's an interesting thing that I've done. On my, uh, my desktop computer, if I right-click and click the click display settings, uh, one of the things that I can do is personalize my, my monitor. And, and on, my, on my monitor in the corner, up in the top corner, um, I have put together a little picture file of all of the staff at all of our campuses and faculty. And my computer rotates through those pictures every, I don't know, three to five seconds. All day long, it rotates through. Now, I have applications up and running a lot, and I don't see that. But when those are closed, I see those pictures rotating through all day long. I see, I see the faculty and the staff and, the, and at each of our campuses rotating around because there's a lot of them, and I don't always remember their names when I go to see some of them. And so this helps put them in my brain. I think this might be a way uh, for some of you, perhaps, to use to, if, especially if you have trouble remembering names, to set up a picture file like that. I don't know if anybody else has ever done that before. I have not, but that is a, that is a great suggestion. Uh, I think that, you know, it's great for, for not only learning names, Rick, but for also uh, maybe taking an opportunity to pray for those people. Oh, I like that. They pop up and you realize, you know what, I need to pray for those people. It's a great reminder to us 
that we need to do more than just teach the students. We need to be praying for them as well. I like that. Tony Wilson just popped in a, a text um, uh, chat box. Uh, the majority of the issues that I have that discourage students is when their grades are adversely affected by their poor writing and failure to adhere to APA guidelines. Yeah, that's true. Rather than work to improve their writing, they state uh, other teachers do not have a problem with their writing. Uh, I think we've all heard that before. How do I get the message across early on that writing standards and and APA are as important to them as addressing the elements of that week's topic. And Tony, here's how I've handled that uh, in class myself. And Ron, maybe you can jump in in a moment. Uh, I tell students early on that when they get out of college, one of the things that their employers expect from them is that they would be able to write a decent paragraph or prepare a decent, well-written report. And that even if they learn all of the content and they cannot write that report, it will inhibit their career and make it nearly impossible for them to advance. Ron, what would you say to that? Yeah, I would agree with that. The other thing I would say would be uh, if, if it's, whether it's an on-ground or an online course, you know, online you have to, to do that weekly announcement. I know with my faculty, I ask them to send out a faculty intro email uh, before class starts to get to know the students uh, and let them get to know them. Um, that's an opportunity for you to take to really help them understand, you know what, I'm not sure what you've heard from other instructors about APA or the importance, but in this class, we're really going to be focusing on your writing skills and your APA format. So be prepared to write well and to make adjustments as, as needed where APA is concerned. That's very important, isn't it? I think writing across the curriculum is something we have to continue to reinforce over and over again. Every instructor, no matter what course you're teaching, you are also teaching writing. And that's a challenge. I, I admit that. That's a big challenge. But if we don't do it, we fail our students in the long run. Yeah. Thank you, Tony, for writing that. Nick says, I have a big disconnect on who the student services people are. I don't think I've ever met two of them, and that was because we both tried to fix the copy machine. It seems like we would have had a better way to help the student when we know who is on the other side of student alerts. That's a really uh, interesting point, Nick. Uh, I think that maybe we could do a better job of, of that. We'll have to ponder how to make that work, and I'll talk with the other deans about that and see what we can do to help maybe connect you all with some of the student services folk. Thank you for that. Uh, the coach doctor writes, I don't know who the coach doctor is, but the coach doctor writes the great perspective. Oh, it says great perspective or she, uh, no matter what course you are teaching, you are teaching writing. Amen. And that is absolutely true. Uh, Dr. Blanche Wallace. Well, thank you, Dr. Wallace. Excellent. Excellent. Great point. It is a great point. We have to do that or we fail our students. That is a fact. Well, and, and Rick, one of the things I've shared with my own faculty here in Chattanooga and Dalton is what you do in your class either sets the next instructor up for, um, you know, being great or, or being negative. That's so true. And um, if we hold everybody to the same standards, which are clearly outlined where writing is concerned, then we don't run the risk of making – of another person that really focuses on writing, being negative to the students if we're all holding them to the same standards. That's true. Yeah, students do have a tendency to say, uh, well, nobody else held me to those standards or no other faculty has given me this much uh, grief in my grading. Every other, every other faculty person, they, they say these things, um, but you have to realize they're gross generalizations that may only apply to the ones that they want to pick out of the dozen. Uh, that did hold them accountable, but there were one or two who might not have held them accountable. Uh, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that you'd want to maybe take that with, uh, we'll take it with a grain of salt and let them know that regardless of that, you're in this for their success in the future, regardless of what other faculty have done or how the other faculty may have let them down, that you are not going to let them down. John Song writes, early warning for online courses are in Canvas, but adult studies are still in BlazeNet. Uh, I use student cases for student 
Is this still the best method? I believe that even in the Canvas for the on-ground courses, Dr. Song, that you will be able to find the student alert in that, in that Canvas course, even for the on-ground courses. Now, I don't think we're using BlazeNet for student, uh, student alerts anymore. Ron, do, would you know that to be the case? I think that's the case. I think that is the case. I think it, if it's an on-ground course and you click on the student alert, it, it goes to the proper people on ground. Yes, it does. I know that they've got it set up that way. Excellent. All right, super. Well, thank you all for participating. This has been a good, a good time, and I appreciate what you've done, Ron. If you wouldn't mind, um, maybe we can visit offline, Ron, so that you can prepare your or set your slides up to be able to send out for people. Sure. Uh, as a PDF, perhaps, and they can use that to look through the points and remind them of something. Uh, hopefully, you all have taken away something. I hope you've taken away one thing that you can do uh, this next week to encourage your students, to help them to stay focused and stay the course. Remember, no one wants to quit halfway and just have the debt without the paper. We need to get them across the finish line. We need to do everything we can in that regard. Some won't, but it shouldn't be because we have dropped the ball. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Ron. I really appreciate your sharing this presentation. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. All right. God bless you all, and we will be taking off.